to save it! And Charlton are promoted! Two years ago, Charlton did it the hard way. Their epic playoff triumph heralded a Premiership adventure that unfortunately only lasted for one season. This time round, Alan Kirbishley is aiming much higher. Victory over QPR last Friday was their 15th in 17 games and left them 13 points clear at the top of the nationwide. Tonight, Charlton stepped out at Port Vale, needing just six points to guarantee promotion and another crack at England's elite. Good evening and welcome to Carlton Sport and another night of great significance in the race for promotion to the Premiership. In keeping with that theme, I'm delighted that the First Division Manager of the Month, Dave Bassett, is with us. His Barnsley team currently second behind Charlton. The views of Dave a little later, plus the best moments from fourth-placed Ipswich's trip to West Bromwich Albion. But we begin at Vale Park. Charlton Athletic closing in on promotion and the Division One title against a struggling Port Vale side desperate for points at the wrong end of the table. Your commentator is Roger Taines. They're desperately looking for a hero at Vale Park, and just maybe Billy Villianen could be the man. The Finnish striker scored the opening goal on Saturday against Portsmouth, his third in six matches. It set Paul Vale on their way to only their first win in 11. But it was enough for Brian Horton to believe his team can still beat the drop. Michael Cummins and David Healy have both temporarily joined the cause from Middlesbrough and Manchester United respectively. 12 of Port Vale's 19 defeats have been by a single goal. And to put Vale's plight into even more perspective, Charlton's Andy Hunt has scored more goals this season than the home side's entire starting 11. 22 his total to be precise. Goals haven't been too much of a problem for the championship leaders, but that doesn't stop Alan Kirbishley giving Hunt a new striking partner. The experienced Paul Kitson starts his first game since joining on loan from West Ham. That apart, it's the same side that needed a late winner to beat QPR last Friday, their 12th away win in 19. The referee is Bill Jordan from Hertfordshire. These two teams know all about end-of-season pressures for Port Vale. It's their third relegation battle in a row. For Charlton, though, it's been an up-and-down few years and they're looking such hot favourites to get back into the right sort of movement. Paul Kitson, it's a really good hand to have to play at this stage of a promotion campaign. Port Vale, 23rd in Division 1, second bottom. Whatever way you phrase it, it's a desperate position. And they really do need a victory to give themselves some hope. Six points behind the two teams above them. The uh, goal difference isn't uh, too bad, but it's going to be a tight one. And already Port Vale have got a, a corner. Rougier is their leading goal scorer with nine. And Charlton face their first test. Tankard as well going up to add a little bit of extra support. And certainly Port Vale need a fly-up. Well, that's a really disappointing effort from Tony Rougier. He was obviously looking for some sort of near-post knock-on, but he never connected properly. And Brian Horton looks on there in comparative amazement. He's not been desperately disappointed with the performances recently. It's just getting those results to go with him that's been a major problem. Again, making life unnecessarily difficult. Well, this does have Rougier down here on this near touchline to think about. Newton dropping deep and Barnes taking the chance to push on. Barnes started as a trainee, Charlton have built their promotion push on players who proved their worth to the club. Oh, that's dropped short again. And Dean Kiley really had to be sharp then. O'Callaghan coming through from the midfield. And Chandler got to cut out these rather unnecessary mistakes. 
and have got away with that one but with not too much to spare and Dean Kiley certainly was sharp off his line and seems to have paid a bit of a price but the back pass has been well short and Callaghan chased it with determination and Keeley had to be brave and it was Brown's miscue that started all the problems Too impressed with what he's been seeing out there so far by the look of it. Bridlington. Carragher. And Ruth is doing well to get ahead of his man then. Now there might be a break on. Hunt again, very tightly marked indeed. Well, Burton's giving him not an inch. Dixon can give it a chase now. So not too pleased to be pulled up then. And just a hint of an elbow there as he was challenged by Tankard. Settling for the throw. Well, I think Andy Hunt's reputation has gone somewhat before him, judging by the treatment he's getting from Zachy Burton, who's absolutely on his back all the time. Hit first time. Kitson is on to this. Kitson with a real opportunity there, but it was good work by Pilkins, and Kitson gets another chance into the middle. Well, Hunt thought that he might be on the end of that to profit. Pilkington, fortune favours the brave on that occasion. Pilkington had to do something on both instances then. Kitson, well, the keeper had come an awful long way out for the block and it meant he had an awful long way to get back. Hunt was through the middle, but again, certainly Burton stuck right to him and provided the cover. And again, the game picks up extra pace. Newton, Rufus, made it a little bit tight for themselves, Brown. Another sharp effort there, Widrington. And certainly Brian Horton cannot complain about the commitment from his team tonight. Some biting tackling in midfield, playing sharp a problem or two, but here's Kitson. We know that Charlton have got the threat in attack if they can just get the service going. Here's Kinsella looking to open it wide. Barnes has got Newton outside and finds him. Threatening looking build up this from Charlton. Barnes has gone on. Kitson and Hunt waiting in the middle, but he couldn't find them. And look how quickly Port Vale got men back. Rougier. Lucas first time. Healy. Wanted to turn his man, Rufus wasn't buying it. And Stewart plays it forward for Kitson to make a run. Not got too much support. It's got Hunt in the middle. Waiting for an option. Stewart providing it. They can only toe poke it towards Kevin Pilkington. Healy and Villanen moving ahead of. Carragher and again it came up short but the flag on the far side ended any danger but he is proving a handful Billy Villanen blood or no blood is definitely wounding Charlton when he gets a chance not through there and you can see the arms raised in classic fashion and the appeal supported by the assistant referee good running though by the front striker he just needs the timing of it to be improved and we've got an experienced manager at the helm in Brian Horton 
He used to experience here. John Rudge knew how to keep this place afloat better than any man. And Brian Horton trying to follow his example at the moment. Forward by Kinsella for Kitson. Stewart providing support and Newton. That's a nice little one-two play there. Robinson in really good space here. Touch just let him down. And Cummins can knock it forward for Healy. Brown tight on his man as well. Both sets of defenders so anxious not to make a mistake. And Brown's already come close to making one that proved costly. Schneiders. Schneiders again, robbed by Kitson, but there's nothing in it. Well, he's just knocking it ahead of Burton here. Little Rougier. Viana looking to turn Rufus, gets the shot in. That is a fabulous goal. Oh, he's done it again. Maybe he could be the hero. What a strike, Steve Kiley. Well, didn't have a prayer with that one. Bloodied but unbowed. Villanen hit that so sweetly, always going away for the keeper, and that is a tremendous goal. Hope springs even more eternal at Vale Park, and Charlton rocked. Good 25 yards. Absolutely tremendous strike. Well, Villanen's been threatening to do that, and Rufus finding out he's got a real handful to deal with. Six minutes to go to half-time, and Port Vale has drawn blood. Here's Newton. Tankard. with a good turn then. Trout will be more than happy to go in level at half-time now. Hunt, he's a goal-scoring machine, but he's not had too much of a chance so far. Robinson. Now Stewart has got some room here. He hits one. And Whittington didn't quite gather it, but did the second time. And Stewart producing the long shot now. Closing down, and he took the chance to fire in a skidding effort, which the keeper parried. And he did two attempts to make sure the move was finally in, under control. Schneiders gets it away. All Charlton in the final few minutes of the first half. Sparked into a more positive response by that opening goal. Down goes Rougier, and that's a free kick to Port Vale. And that's worth a yellow card, says the referee. Barnes joining Brown in the book. Rougier the victim. Rougier out wide, he'll do well to keep this in. It was a decent attempt, but he couldn't quite complete the job. <laughs> Referees, this is over half-time, and a tremendous first half for Port Vale, who got progressively stronger as the half wore on. Absolutely first-class strike from Vili Viljanen. That's his fourth in seven games now, and it's really given Port Vale a lifeline and Charlton Athletic a problem. And the scorebook favours Port Vale at the moment, but the form book didn't give them a prayer. It's five months since Charlton lost the league game away from home, which is a, a fabulous record. In fact, their 27 wins 
in this campaign already has equaled a club's 65-year record. But Brian Morton's men certainly found the application required for the job in the first 45 minutes. And I suspect they know there's going to be a response in the second. Rufus. And Rufus couldn't get his tackle in then either. Corkvale threatening once more. And Callaghan wanted it square and slid it through again. David Healy again has made the run. Just a bit too much weight on the ball forward from Giorgio Callaghan. Healy's running has been a major feature. Quite managed to bring the finishing composure to it, but can't give him much of a hope with that one. One for Kitson. And getting the return. A challenge not too popular with the referee from Schneiders on Kitson, and that will be the first for fail booking. Yellow card of the game. Played for to Kitson. Right through him from the back. No argument about that one. Marcelo knocks it in. Half clear. That was a decent effort there from Barnes. Oh, nice, a really good first-time effort, that. It's not quite falling for them, though, is it? Lucas. Rougier. Good touch there from Healy. He's going to be in again, is he? Oh! Nearly gory. Oh, Yaman looking for a magnificent double. Healy knocked it into him early. Julian never quite got the range on that one, and he knew exactly what he wanted to do. Got underneath it and put the chance over the top. And now Newton. Newton and Tankard there together. Parker plays it in early. And no chances taken by Mark Schneiders. Touch from putting it behind. Again, Rufus will lead the charge forward. Kinsella with the corner kick. Plenty of height on it, this is out Hunt. And it was cracked in in the end, rather optimistically by Scott Parker. And he got the taste for goal scoring with his first the winner against QPR. He just fancied another dramatic entrance. More than six minutes of coming off the bench last Friday, not this time. Kitson, Stewart, and very mobile in support. Powell, and that's skews off the fullback Matthew Carragher. And Starting to wonder when this pressure is going to tell. Taken quickly once more. Parker. It's not a bad ball into the middle at all, and Burton did well to get a head on it. It's twice. Parker's been very sharp at getting his delivery in. Yet another corner. This is a really testing period of the game for Port Vale. They need to hang on. Over it comes. And it's a good one. and done the job there's a real tangle going on the back there with Widrington but Rufus forced it over the line and they've got themselves level a messy goal if ever there was one and a sixth of the season has got the Charlton fans up and celebrating a succession of corners finally came off ricocheted off Rufus the first time underneath the bar Widrington was there and Rufus followed up himself to force it over just in case there had been any doubt. His first effort, he certainly didn't stop and admire 
and Charlton have got themselves level. Not quite the style of Villanen's opener, but they all count. And it's Port Vale 1, Charlton 1, midway through the second half. And the game swinging away now from Port Vale. And Tankard's gone across to swing the ball in, left-footed. Burton, oh, he's done it! Saji Burton, his first goal for Port Vale. Instant response, I should say so. What a dramatic reply. Tankard swung it in perfectly was out of Kylie's reach and within a minute they struck back well he's got his angles absolutely spot on Tankard fine delivery and they couldn't cope with the big man and Saji Burton just on a contract till the end of the season has done his bit for his own employment prospects his first it's 2-1 it's all happening now Well, would you believe it? Brian Horton's seen most things in football. He was not presuming that sort of a response, I'm sure. Powell takes up the running again. Stewart has come round on an overlap. Parker, looking to work his magic again, perhaps. Kinsella, looking for room for the shot, and he hit it. Terrific save. Not too much wrong with the shot but it was matched by Kevin Pilkington's reactions in his stride first, checked inside, hit it sweetly, and Pilkington was behind it all the way. Good work. Another Charlton corner, another problem for Port Vale. Pilkington comes for it, doesn't get it, and Hunt gets his goal. It's 2-2 and a second equaliser, and you cannot stop Andy Hunt scoring this season. Number 23, and they struck back again and again from a corner. Keeper couldn't get to it, Hunt could, and the result inevitable. Good height on the delivery, and well met ahead of the keeper by the arch goal scorer of the first division. It's 2 2, and have Port Vale got it in them to come back again? Uh, are six points behind West Brom and Walsall, who are locked together in the two positions above them. And Joel Reed isn't good enough in the circumstances. And that would still be a valuable point. Parker playing it in, looking for Hunt to tell. Parker going all the way. Referee waves play to continue, despite a few appeals around there. just for that little shove by Sachi Burton that they were appealing. There was a hand in there somewhere. Rufus. Rufus again. Kinsella. Nobody on the end of that one. Some pressure now. It's a good break this by Cummings. Excellent work again by Scott Parker. You know, it was a foul in the end. He didn't like it in fact too much, but Parker's come on and really pepped up the midfield. I feel he got his foot to the ball, but wrapped his legs around the attacker in the process. Good. 
Rouge maybe might fancy this. He was there as well. And he has a go. And it was a brave effort. He's got one or two decent strikers of a dead ball at Manchester United. If he's learned anything, then there's an opportunity to put it into practice. It's about a yard wide. kick again to Port Vale can they make the set piece really tell and Graham getting another clattering Swenson is ready to come on the free kick is taken Rougier he creates an opening for himself, hits it with the deflection, and that'll be a corner kick. Furious waving from the Charlton dugout to get this substitution made as the effort flew in on goal. And the expected squat for Svensson, but the referee making them hold on. Substitution can be made. Oh, Kitson was preferred to start this one in place of Matthias Svensson, the 25 year old Swede. And Svensson comes off the bench to take his place for the last nine minutes or so. Goes back into a defensive position. Here comes the corner from Cummins. Oh, that wasn't a bad effort at all. He's had a fair old game for Leon then. Got up a height as well. Didn't steer it on target. Down square to Carl Tyler, a substitute. Stewart lets the ball run and provides a little opening for himself. Stewart looking to go all the way here, maybe. But it's come through to Parker. Well, he's got the appetite after last week and he has looked lively just 19 Stewart carving open some space and the clearance of Tankard gave Parker an opening got a corner and it's taken again and lots of light on it and Rufus is up there and it was Brown who stuck out a boot not much prospect of getting any control it was just a reaction Great jump though by Rufus, but lifted over the top by his defensive partner. Stewart. Hunt's run. Still with Andy Hunt, twisting and turning. And again, and getting the ball into the middle. Swenson there, looking for a penalty. Parker played it in again, and Newton was there. Furious protests. Powell almost grabbing the referee then, which I really would not advise. But so close to the decisive strike of the evening. Hunt twisting and turning and really working to get the ball into the middle, which he did impressively. Svensson tangled up then with Tankard. Well, that's it. There's really a whole division between these two teams at kickoff, but Port Vale certainly did their bit to close the gap. Villarreal have got them off to a special opener. Rufus brought Charlton level, but an instant response from his central defender at the opposite end, Sergi Burton, who once more gave Port Vale hope. But Andy Hunt, his goal-scoring form continues with a second equaliser for Charlton. A hyperactive second 45. Charlton continue their progress towards the Premiership, surely. But the commitment, certainly for Port Vale, must continue to give them a little bit of hope, even if in the end the result couldn't. Just for one point then for Port Vale and for Charlton each. Port Vale 2, 
Charlton Athletic 2. In all fairness, they, they worked ever so hard. They closed us down first half. We found the pitch a problem. It was a little bit bubbly for us, but, you know, we couldn't get going. And I was grateful to get back in the game. You couldn't do much about stopping their first goal. Their second a bit soft from your I point of view? We could have done a little bit better on the first goal. You know, the first challenge, I think Rouget's flicked it on and, you know, we didn't deal with that. But it was a fantastic strike and uh, caught Dean unawares, I think. And really, you know, we come at half time, we're not playing well and we're losing 1 0. And uh, we had to raise it in the second half. For the first 10 minutes, it didn't look like we were. So we changed the shape and uh, changed the personnel a little bit. And, you know, gradually we got back in it. And uh, I think the last 10 or 15 minutes, uh, the momentum was with us. And I think Paul Val was holding on a little bit. I can't ask any more of any of my players tonight. I thought they were magnificent. I mean, Villy, Villy's unlucky, struck a great first goal. Got cleared in on a tremendous move, and it just took a bobble, he said, just as he clipped it over the keeper. That's the way it goes sometimes. But I can't ask any more of them. If they do the same things with the remaining games, I can't ask any more. And you look at it as a point one rather than two loss? Yeah, I think so. They took two points off us this season now, and uh, they played well in both games. And we come here, the way we played the first half, was, you know, we didn't perform at all, so in the end, we're probably happy with the point. We've got Dave Bassett, the Barnsley boss, uh, in our studio. Have you got a message for Dave sitting there in second place? Well, he knows how tough it's going to be. You know, no one's won more promotions than David, and uh, you know he knows that nights like tonight, you've got to get something from the game. And um, we'll be the first to admit we haven't played as well as we can, but we've got a point, and that's the most important thing. He called you David. He's got great respect for you. <laughs> yeah, he didn't really answer the question though. But uh, Alan would be well pleased with the point tonight because they didn't play well, and uh, they possibly could have lost that point. So it's a point game for them. These are the most vital games, aren't they? A Tuesday night in Port Vale is, you know, where you've got to pick up points. Yeah, there's lots of difficult games. You call them scrappy games in some way. Port Vale fighting for their life. And uh, I think it's a valuable point for, for Cholton. I mean, Alan would have preferred to get the three tonight, but uh, Cholton were firing on all cylinders and uh, probably in a different situation. Had the uh, opportunity come, they could have got a second goal. Yeah, the, I mean, in the first half, they were slow out of the blocks, as Alan said, weren't they? Yeah, that's not the Cholton that I've sort of got used to know. I mean, uh, obviously all teams have periods where they don't play so well, but uh, in fairness, they did come second best. Uh, not that Paul Vale had loads of chances, but certainly they were in the ascendancy. They uh, went a goal down, didn't they, Charlton, to a great goal in the end? Yeah, this was a, a good goal. I mean, it come up, Rouget gets a little touch on here, and uh, then the Viljan gets the ball. He gets a good turn on Rufus uh, slips, but it's a great strike. It's an excellent strike. He's taken it early, and I think he's uh, caught uh, Dean Carley out. And uh, I mean, Alan, I say defensively, it wasn't quite the best, but you can see it's a good strike here. It's bounced down, a fine goal. But then he could have made it too, couldn't he, with this uh, other chance that he yeah, had? Yeah, this is in the second half, he's through. Uh, the ball's bounced a little bit, but uh, that's a good chance. And he'd be disappointed uh, that he didn't finish that, really. A few inches lower, and that could have been 2-0, and the game could have been beyond Charlton. Then. But then a minute after that, then Charlton are straight back in it again. But that often happens in football, doesn't it? All of a sudden, the, the, you hit the post or you miss an opportunity. This comes just a little bit of a luck, because uh, Richard Rufus doesn't really know much about it. It bounces off him and goes over the goalkeeper. But again, you need little bits of luck at the right time. And then a minute after this, you see, there, there it goes again, you know, chopping and changing all the time. Yeah, we've seen again, when a goal's scored, sometimes you're very vulnerable at that moment. And uh, again, Cholton had just got back into the game. Port Vale go down the other end. It's a free kick, a set play. And uh, Port Vale put themselves back in charge. But Charlton have proved over and over again this season that they never give up, do they? They go on and on. They're a strong side. Uh, I think they've been the best and most consistent side in the league, and they've shown in this particular instance, even though they've gone 2-1 down, that they haven't buckled. They've shown their pedigree to come back and that they've battled on and to get the equaliser. And, and Kinsella led from the front, didn't he? And the captain's example. Yeah, Kinsella did well because he was involved in this incident here where he comes in, he hits a fine shot, it's a good shot, the keeper brings a good save off and the ball goes out for the corner. And as we see from the corner, uh, Hunt scores from that corner. So Kinsella's early work has created the opportunity. All right, not the best marking, but again, a good run by Hunt. He's picked off his man and uh, all of a sudden, Charlton are level. So Charlton now just five points away from actually getting promotion. Why are they so good? Why are they there? Well, I think uh, they, they've had experience over the last few years. They were close to getting up on two occasions. They did make it via the playoffs. Last year, I think they learned a lot. Their side's been together for quite a consistent time. Alan's added one or two players, and they've been the most consistent side in the league over the season. There's no doubt about that, because they're 14 points in front of the rest of us. All right, Dave. Thanks very much indeed.
So Charlton's lead is now 14 points after their point at uh, Port Vale. Ipswich could only manage a point there, as we saw, and they remain fourth. Two points behind Dave Bassett's Barnsley, who still occupy that all-important second place. Actually, they play tomorrow night, so they could go above you. Let's have a look at Charlton's run-in. I mean, they, they could more or less really realistically be there, couldn't they? Well, I think Cholton are promoted and I think they're going to be the champions. I don't think there's any doubt about that. We're, the rest of us teams are not going to be able to catch uh, Cholton. They've got, they're going to have to lose every game. We're going to have to win every game and it doesn't work.